Hello, thank you for joining with me. We are in Chapter 4, The Illusions of the Ego of Journey Through the Text of A Course in Miracles with Ken Wapnick. We are starting the section called Jesus. As I have said in Chapter 5, the role of Jesus begins to be taken by the Holy Spirit in terms of function. They are the same, however, as both are our inner teacher. When we recognize that something is wrong here and no solution proffered, I can't say that word, proffered by the ego has worked, we ask the question the ego never wanted to be asked. Is there another way? This questioning marks the beginning of the ego's end. To avoid this inevitability, we are driven to solve problems here, as we have just discussed, or when one solution does not work, we are impelled to seek another, and another, and another. As the workbook says in the context of special relationships, another can be found. If this relationship fails, there will always be another that will work. It naturally does not, and so we embark on an endless, unrewarding chain of special relationships. As the text later explains, at some point we throw up our hands in despair and plead for help. This initiates the firing of the ego and acceptance of Jesus as our teacher. He has long waited for this invitation And as we prepare to take the hand that has always been extended to ours, he instructs us on the journey of awakening on which we are about to embark, his gentle correction to the ego's pain-laden journey of crucifixion. The journey to the cross should be the last useless journey. Do not dwell upon it, but dismiss it as accomplished. If you can accept it as your own last useless journey, you are also free to join my resurrection. Until you do so, your life is indeed wasted. It merely reenacts the separation, the loss of power, the futile attempts of the ego at reparation, and finally, the crucifixion of the body or death. Such repetitions are endless until they are voluntarily given up. Do not make the pathetic error of clinging to the old rugged cross. The only message of the crucifixion is that you can overcome the cross. Until you are free to crucify yourself, until then you are free to crucify yourself as often as you choose. This is not the gospel I intended to offer you. We have another journey to undertake. And if you will read these lessons carefully, they will prepare you to undertake it. Jesus cannot help us if we refuse to join him, setting aside the ego's thought system of crucifixion and choosing instead his journey of resurrection. This is the choice for joy and freedom, our having finally chosen against the ego's suffering and death. Our choice is facilitated by allowing Jesus to show us the inherent pain in choosing the ego as our teacher and the utter uselessness of desiring a path that only victimizes ourselves and others. This is the Course's definition of crucifixion and the embodiment of the ego's thought system of innocence, lost through sin and regained through attack. Jesus gently takes our hand as an elder brother, guiding his younger siblings and teaching us the difference between the levels of mind and body. As we now read, A father can safely leave a child with an elder brother who has shown himself responsible. I can be entrusted with your body and your ego, only because this enables you not to be concerned with them and lets me teach you their unimportance. Let us undertake to learn this lesson together so we can be free of them together.
A central component on this journey is our growing up to become like Jesus. For how could our loving brother not have as his goal for us that we learn that an illusion, the ego and body, has no great effect on our reality as spirit? He goes to great lengths, as we have already seen, to emphasize our fundamental equality as God's Son. He makes this point again here, providing an alternate explanation for a traditional Christian concept. The first coming of Christ is merely another name for the creation, for Christ is the Son of God. The second coming of Christ means nothing more than the end of the ego's rule and the healing of the mind. I was created like you in the first, and I have called you to join with me in the second. Your ego is trying to convince you that it is real and I am not, because if I am real, I am no more real than you are. When we accept Jesus as our teacher, the anticipation of the second coming is transformed from dread to certain hope. Rather than being the expression of Jesus' punishment for our sins, it becomes the affirmation of our eternal equality with him and all the sonship, which our belief in separation has never changed. One God, one Son, forever joined in his unified will. Jesus then describes how he will help us remember that our self is the same as his. And I am going to stop there today, and we will pick this up at our next reading, either tomorrow or the day after. And I will see you then. I thank you so much for joining with me. I love you. Have a beautiful day.